Lindsay. A lot of our leaders, the first question, have been suggesting that uh, uh, you've taken, or the Liberals have taken, you've got that question in the point. Take, I mean, take the community for granted. Take the Anglo the phone community for granted. How do you respond to that? And uh, do you understand, and you see it a little bit with the people checking out the CAC, uh, do you understand why people would feel that way? I do understand why they feel that way. And, and do we take the community for granted? No, we don't. And, uh, but why is it uh, sometimes uh, perceived that way? Well, I think the first answer is that our whole political debate is focused in Quebec around, uh, a lot of it, around this issue of uh, separation and referendums. It's the reality of Quebec politics. And, uh, and it's been that way, and as long as the Parti Québécois is there, it's going to be a big part of the political debate. I mean, it's just unavoidable. That being said, our party has always been a political party that has stood up for a, a vision of Quebec that's inclusive, and where the Anglophone community uh, play uh, the role that uh, we hope they will play, and, uh, and we support its institutions. And, uh, and that's reflected in our decisions. And it will always be reflected in our decisions. But I can see where, you know, from time to time, people would feel that, uh, that they may be taken for granted. But you say you understand it, but what, why does that, that, that feel? What is it that you understand about that? Well, about, the, about the sources of that? that well, the, the, for, the, for the Anglophone community, a big part of the political debate in Quebec is elsewhere. It's not, it's not within their, their community itself. It happens within uh, what we call a uh, more French-speaking population, if you want, because it's centered around nationalism. It's centered around uh, the debate of whether we'll separate or not or holding another referendum. And so the time and effort is dedicated to debating those issues. But that doesn't mean that the, the issues that concern the community are not attended to, that they're not, you know, uh, that they're not a preoccupation that we speak to, and and we do, and we feel that we do respond to the needs of the community, but obviously it's the front page stories in Quebec are, are more around the the other debate than, uh, than what happens elsewhere. It's the reality of Quebec politics. I'm wondering whether you have uh, an unwritten rule within the Liberal Party that even representatives of the English-speaking community are not supposed to speak out in defense of the English-speaking community because that would open your party to accusations of being the Parti des Anglais, the party of the English. Is there such a rule, unwritten or otherwise, or are your English-speaking cabinet ministers and MNAs free to speak out in defense of the community? Well, they are very much free to do so. And maybe, maybe there are times where we could have done it uh, better, or more forcefully. And if that's the case, well, then you know we'll uh, we'll be more responsive. That may happen. That uh, maybe it's happened that we have not been forceful enough. But they, there is a total freedom to do that. There's no unwritten rule, in other words, Don, that says if it's the, in the Anglophone community, it's less important than it is for for someone else or uh, or for uh, any other uh, community. It's a matter of us uh, being there, and the, and the caucus I do have is a very strong caucus representing all parts of Quebec. Ministers like Jeff Kelly and Lawrence Bergman sits at the cabinet table as the chair of uh, caucus, and uh, Yelan James uh, also is a, a big part of uh, of that team, and uh, and it's a matter of us, uh, you know, being with the community and representing it at, uh, when these events happen. But we we feel we do. It's a matter of, uh, I guess, of us uh, applying our judgment to how much of an intervention we want to make. Then there seems to be a, a, a concern in the Anglican community today that the PQ could take power and they're worried about their own values. There's a lot of this sort of talk already starting, uh, as it was apparently at that, at that period. But do you have anything to reassure them on that, uh, on that front because they... Uh, you know, they, you definitely have the impression that the Anglophone voter doesn't really know what to do this time around. They're, they're, they're a little bit tired of your government. They're dabbling with the CAC. They don't want PQ. What, do you have some message for them in that in that sense? I'm, I want the community to support me for the right reasons, 
and the right reasons is, uh, first of all, uh, a government uh, and a political party whose values are values in which they recognize themselves, and uh, that is a political party who believes in social justice and inclusiveness and the fact that uh, we should be part of Canada and that we should work with our allies and that uh, we believe in all the things that should be done to unite us, not divide us, uh, as opposed to that. I want, and a political party who believes that the economy is a way for us to actually generate stronger support for our social programs and so that we can live better. These are good, solid reasons to support us with a proven track record. And, uh, and, if, uh, and also who's going to be strong and stand up to uh, some of the tough decisions, not invite trouble. I mean, when I hear Le Gou speak, I mystify, but why does he keep saying he's, he wants to create la chicane and bring up? I mean, we know that governments make decisions that are sometimes unpopular, and we have to make those decisions. We have to be able to make those decisions to, to do what's right. But if you start from the premise that I'm actually going to go out there and create this uh, turmoil... Uh, Which people did. Which people have said that. Yeah, yeah he yeah. has. I mean, yeah. he's actually said that. He's actually said, I am going to create, uh, the words he uses, shikan, and not more than once, by the way. He used it for the first time last spring when he was in Tawit. And then he's returned to this notion. I mean, if you start from that premise, it doesn't, doesn't sound like a very good recipe for, uh, for the future of Quebec. Bonjour. 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 Au revoir. Moi, je dois quitter. Il faut que j'aille diriger Québec.